Pierre, Watts, Lux, and Kelvin. So we keep hearing these terms in aquarium lighting. What are they? What do they do? And do they affect plant growth? We'll cover that in this video. Check it out. For years now, we've been measuring lighting requirements for plants and corals to grow based on generalizations. This is based on the lack of tech as well as science is focused on a hobby, so we tend to find some kind of baseline that we go by when purchasing a lighting setup based on our collective experiences. In this video, we're going to talk about some of those terms and such that I haven't mentioned in the previous videos yet, but might be important to learn. But before we go on, if you're new here, you want to talk more about aquariums as well as learn more about aquariums, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. With this hobby, it is an exact science. We know what we know based on the knowledge and experience that we as Aquarius share together. But like everything else in life, knowledge progresses and so does the tech. Now, other than per the other measurements that I do mention here does not have any direct bearing or relations to actually growing plants. Now some of you people still use these terms because it's based on the old ways of doing things. Either they read it on the internet, it's just the way they learn. Or some of these terms just not valid anymore because it's based on wrong assumptions passed on to person or person. Or simply we've just gone beyond that. First thing we're going to talk about is PER, photosynthetic usable radiation. Now this is somewhat like PAR and I mentioned PAR in an earlier video but this actually measures the quality of light of that par rating that the plants can actually use to grow. Yeah, I know, it does get confusing, and that's why I said I didn't want to mention it in an earlier video, but I think you do need to know this for a specific reason. Now, in that previous video about par, I didn't want to mention too much about par or get too much into it because it was a reading that takes more expensive equipment to measure, even though that is a much more accurate way to find out if our plants can actually use the light that we're giving it. However, with the advent of technology, that might be changing probably very soon. Already out in the market, there is something called the Sunite Reef Monitoring System, and that actually does measure PAR rating as well as the percentage of that PAR rating, which is considered PER. And for my research, it is a decently or close enough accurate readings that this device does make, and we could actually use at an affordable price. And that price range being $200. Now I know that's still a price range that's kind of out of the range for some of us, but that's just a good example of how the text is advancing. And as long as the text is advancing, the products are gonna go lower in price. Now, as I said before, PER is the more accurate reading to go by when growing plants. The reason why is this. Suppose that we use a light fixture that gives us a PAR rating of say 80 PAR, and it could only use 40% of that PAR rating, basically the PER value of it is about 40%. Why use that when you can use a light that will give your plant 60 par, but it can use 90% of that par rating. And from that, I hope you understand why per it's more accurate reading than par. But for right now, par is still a good way to go. Now let's talk about wattage. And basically wattage is the measurement of how much power it'll take to power the lighting fixture. Now this is very important because people still use this and it's a very, very inaccurate way of determining the light to use for your aquarium or your planted tank or your corals. This is because a long, long time ago when we did planted tanks, when we did corals and stuff like that, we relied on just basic fluorescent bulbs. And basic fluorescent bulbs come in wattages and we use that to determine how many lights that we could use for aquariums. The problem with that is over the years we started using different types of lights to light our planted aquariums and that's basically due to using like stuff like metal highlights or compact fluorescence, T5 high outputs or again the latest technology is LEDs that we rely on. And why doesn't this work? It's a very simple explanation example. Check this out. Now let's take for example this 13 watt compact fluorescent bulb and this is a bulb that you get at any supermarket or any big box store. Now this bulb can give out the same amount of light that a 60 watt incandescent bulb can give out. You know, the old bulbs that we used to use. So when someone comes up to me and says, well, I'm using a 30 watt fixture. I'm like, well, okay, that doesn't tell me anything because I don't know if you're using compact fluorescent, regular incandescent bulbs, regular T5s, regular T8s, high output T5s, you, you get the point. However, what it is good for is basically measuring the power it takes to power that light fixture so we can determine if the cost is efficient for us in the long run. Now it's okay to say you're running one tank, I'm gonna pay that $1.50 a month to run the lights on my tank and make a pretty tank. 
But for elite jerks like me that have multiple tanks, well, that could get costly in the long run. Elitist jerks. Speaking about how much light is coming out of a bulb, let's talk about lumens and lux. Lumens is the measurement of how bright a light is based on human perception. Lux is the measurement of lumens per cubic meters, basically how bright it is within a cubic meter area. Now, although a more accurate way to measure how much light we're giving our plants, because we're talking about lumens, basically how much light's given out by a bulb, regardless of its wattage, is still not very accurate. Again, the measurement for the brightness of what the plant needs is measured in PAR. Now, there's an equation out there to convert lux to PAR, but again, that's still very inaccurate, mainly because just because a bulb gives out a hundred lux doesn't mean that it's also going to give out that same amount of PAR rating on that light fixture or two different light fixtures. But again, going from watts to lumens, we're getting a little closer. However, lumens is still a good measurement to have because we can use lumens to figure out if our lights are wearing down. A brand new light bulb that says 5,000 lumens, that's great. A year later, it might go down to 2,000. That's how you know that your light is starting to wear down because it's starting to get dull. Kelvin rating. Kelvin is still a very popular term that you'll hear about when dealing with aquarium lighting. It's basically the measurement of the color temperature the light's giving out. At a lower Kelvin rating, say about 3,000, you'll get a very red look, kind of like a dawn or sunset look. Daylight in the middle of the day is around 6,500 Kelvin ratings, and something over 8,000 Kelvin rating, things will start getting blue, like you will see under the sea, under the ocean, everything's blue. So it has nothing to actually do with the growth of plants. However, what it does do is determine the look of your tank. You use the different Kelvin ratings to make colors pop in your tank or as well as set the mood of the tank. So for example, let's take a Kelvin rating of 3500. It's a very warm color. It'll look very red, very orange in your tank. It's really good if your tank's full of red plants, you can make them really pop. The problem is it'll make it look like it's dawn. 6500 or 7000 K is very much daylight. The middle of the day, it's white light, literally white light. So if you have a tank full of greens, it will make all those greens pop out. Ever see a forest in the middle of the day and you're just looking at the horizon and it's very green, very lush, very vibrant green? That's because of the whiteness of that lighting color temperature it's making those greens pop. So this is why a lot of us planted Aquarius who grows a lot of green plants or our aquascapes full of green, we tend to stick with somewhere around that Kelvin rating, 6,500 to 7,000. At 8,000 K or higher, you start getting a bluish tint. Basically, it makes it look blue. It gives that bluish tint, so it really makes the corals pop. It's kind of akin to the effect of using ultra blue violet light at a rave. So before the knowledge and tech advances even more, right now as the making of this video, PAR rating is the best measurement to measure the light for growing plants. Lighting is an ongoing progression in this hobby of ours of growing plants and corals, and the tech and the methods can change at the drop of the dime. Sure, it's frustrating, but not impossible. So be patient and learn and understand it all, and you will grow great and gorgeous planted tanks. Thank you for watching guys. Remember if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification icon and leave a like for me and leave a comment about anything that I've said in this video. I'd like to hear from you. Stay wet with your tanks. I love you guys. Bye.